it's time to open up the box. Alright, let's get right into this. So today we're going to be going over CERN. And you're going to see how Lucifer, Shiva, in my opinion, is going to connect with this. And you'll see that this may very well be a portal to the abyss. Anyways, we're going to get into this. So the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC. The Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator. It first started up on 10, or September 10th, 2008 and remains the latest addition to CERN's accelerator complex. The LHC consists of 27 kilometer ring of superconducting magnets with a number of accelerating structures to boost the energy of the particles along the way. Inside the accelerator, two high energy particle beams travel at a close to the speed of light before they are made to collide. The beams travel in opposite directions in separate beam pipes. Two tubes kept at ultra high vacuum. They are guided around the accelerator ring by strong magnetic field maintained by superconducting electromagnets. The electromagnets are built from coils of special electric cable that operates in the superconducting state. Efficiency or er, efficiently conducting electricity without resistance or loss of energy. This requires chilling the magnets to negative 271 degrees or 0.3 degrees Celsius, a temperature colder than outer space. For this reason, much of the accelerator is connected to the dis or distribution system of liquid helium, which cools the magnets as well as the other supply services. Now, this is quite interesting. If Hell is devoid of light or darkness, right? It's going to be cold. I don't know, something to think about. Anyways, thousands of magnets of different er, varieties and sizes are used to, or to direct the beams around the accelerator. These include 1,232 dipole magnets, 15 meters in length, which bend the beams and 392 quadrupole magnets, each 5 to 7 meet, or meters long, which, sorry, that's a typo, which focus the beams just prior to collision. Another type of magnet is used to squeeze the particles closer together to increase the chance of collisions. The particles are also so tiny that the task of making them collide is akin to firing two needles 10 kilometers or kilometers apart with such precision that they meet halfway. That's basically, you guys get the gist of it. Anyways, now we're going to get into the CERN scientist I parallel universe breakthrough. Physicists probing the origins of the cosmos hope the next year they will turn up first proofs now, this is in 2010, so just remember that. First proofs of existence of concepts long dear near the science fiction writers, such as Hidden Worlds and Extra Dimensions. Now, this is quite interesting because uh, Rob Skiba was saying that the 2012 thing was off by two years. So... If you look what happened in 2010, there was a lot of stuff going on in 2010. And when you hear about people learning about keeping the commandments and stuff like that and learning about the Nephilim, it started around 2009 is when people started waking up. Quite interesting. But anyways, and as their Large Hadron Collider, LHC, at CERN near Geneva moves into high gear, they are talking increasingly of the new physics on the horizon 
that could totally change current views of the universe and how it works. Parallel universes, unknown forms of matter, extra dimensions. These are not the stuff of cheap science fiction, but very concrete physics theories that scientists are trying to confirm with the LHC and other experiments. This is how the ideas men and women in the International Research Center's theory group, which mulls over what could or could be out there beyond the reach of any telescope, but in CERN staff targeted bulletin this month, as particles are collided in the vast underground LHC complex at increasingly high energies, what the bulletin article refers to informally as the universe's extra bits, if they do exist as predicted, should be brought into computerized if ephemeral, ephemeral, whatever that means, view the theories say. So they're looking at extra dimensions, dark matter, unknown forms of matter, right? Okay. Let me see where I wanted to get there. Oh, yeah. So now this come to this date, July 5th, 2022, Geneva. So this is very recent. The physics lab that's home to the world's largest atom smasher announced on Tuesday the observation of three new exotic particles hmm, that could provide clues about the force that binds subatomic particles together. The observation of a new type of pentaquark and the first duo of tetraquarks at CERN. Ge the Geneva area, home to Large Hadron Collider, offers new angle to assess the strong force that holds together the nuclei of atoms. Hmm. Real quick. Manly P. Hall refers to Lucifer as a force. Okay. Anyways, just some observations I'm making there, guys. Not saying it is or isn't. Okay. The most exotic hadrons, which the sum atomic particles, are made up of two or three elemental particles known as quarks. The strong force is one of the four forces known in the universe. Now, it's quite interesting. They're talking about three, right? Triune. I'm just throwing stuff out there, guys. Okay, just throwing stuff out there. Doesn't mean it's true. Okay, the announcement comes amid a flurry of activity this week at CERN. It seems like every time this thing turns on, things go haywire. <laughs> the world gets a little bit dark. Also, Tuesday, the LHC's underground ring of superconducting magnets that propel infinitesimal particles along 27 kilometer, about 17 miles circuit at a near light speed, began smashing them together again. Data from the collisions is snapped up by high-tech detectors along the circular path. This so-called run three of collisions, ending a three-year pause for maintenance and other checks, is operating and on unprecedented energy of 13.6 trillion electron volts, which will offer the prospect of new discoveries in particle physics. Hmm. All right, now we're going to start getting into the meat potatoes here, right? Now, this is the register. This is a very well established, from what I can tell, tech magazine or tech website in the UK. And this was Friday 6, November 2009. A top bofin at the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, says that the Titanic machine may possibly create or discover previously unimagined scientific phenomena or unknown unknowns. For instance, an extra dimension. Or, ready for this? This is his own words. Right, his own words. Out of this door might come something. Hmm. Or he might send something through it, said Sergio 
Bertolucci, who is Director for Research in Scientific Computing at CERN, briefing reporters including the Art or Reg at CERN HQ earlier this week. The LHC built inside a 27 miller. Yeah, you guys know all that. We just went over that. The differences are firstly that streams of particles are moving at. Okay, yeah. Anyways, I just wanted to put that in there real quick. Because, see, he says, out of this door might come something. So he says it's a door, a doorway from his own mouth. Guy at CERN, okay? This isn't crazy me saying this. Here we go. Now this is even gets even better. CERN's curious choice of geographic location. Now on the top of all speculation as to what CERN scientists are really attempting to do with their Large Hadron Collider. Many observers could not help but notice that the town in France where the CERN is partially situated is called saint genis Pouli. The name Pouli comes from the Latin Apollicum, and it is believed that the Roman times a temple existed in honor of Apollo. And the people who lived there believe that it is a, ready, gateway to the underworld. Hmm. It is interesting to note that CERN is built on the same spot. Things that make you go, hmm. Religious leaders, always suspicious of the aims of scientific world, drew a connection to the verse straight out of Revelations 9, 1 through 2, 11, which makes reference to the name Apollyon. The verse states, To him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and opened the bottomless pit. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in Greek tongue at this name Apollyon. Okay, we'll get into that here in a second. But here's another one. Tapping into dark matter. Astonishingly, astrophysical observations have demonstrated that all visible physical matter accounts for only 4% of the universe. Now, the race is on at CERN to find those exclusive particles or phenomena responsible for dark matter. 23% and dark energy, 73%, essentially what the CERN experiment hopes to achieve to separate by the way of atom smasher, the invisible dark matter. Could this be or the black goo or black waters, the deep's waters? I don't know, which has been described as very glue that holds together from the visible. There's just one problem with the experiment. Nobody has any idea what the consequences will be if the goal is achieved. So once again, this dark versus visible paradigm has generated a battle that transcends the scientific world, becoming a question involving philosophy and spirituality. Hmm. Now. People, anyways, I just want to show you the town right here. But not only that, I'll show you. Okay, it was in 1887 that the current name St. Guinness Pulley first appeared on the state civil registers. Previously, St. Guinness Pulley was called Pulley St. Guinness or Guinness. Before that, the two towns were separately identified. Historically, the spelling St. Genex had been widely used. In historical or deborn place, Polyacum, in the epoch on the second reign of Borogon, and placed the Church of Poly, St. Genus, in the region's or religious maps. In these proves, he cites the text of 90, or 993 which mentions polyacum. Now, you're going to have people say, well, polyacum isn't a word. And, and I saw a lot of people say, well, find me an article where that does has nothing to do with CERN, that has a polyacum in it, right? Because this word polyacum comes from the word apolyacum. 
But anyways, here we go. St. Guinness Police is a common with 19, or 9, 186 inhabitants or 9,186 inhabitants as of January 1st, 2011. And the Department of Aid, this is kind of an old one, but I just want to show you. Formerly called the Community Police St. Guinness, only in 1887 was the now valid place name has been set. The name Poli comes from Latin, Apoliacum. Probably stood here in Roman times, a temple in honor of Apollo. Okay. Not only that, there's a book in 18, I think 38 was this. Here it is. Apollyacum. So don't let people tell you that that wasn't a thing. Okay, you see it right there. Anyways, now we're going to get into uh, Manly P. Hall. Lucifer and the Crab. This post was originally published in an article, oh, sorry, issue of Livingstone's Masonic Magazine. It is published here with the kind of permission of the owner and editor Livingstone's Magazine brother, Robert Hurt. So, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou called down the ground, which did weakest the nations? Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning, is it he who bears the light and with the splendors intolerable blinds feeble, sensual, or selfish souls? Doubt it not. I'm sorry, this is, I believe, yeah, that's Albert Pike. I'm sorry. So this is Manly P. Hall. When Mason learns that the key of the warrior of the block is the proper application of a dynamo of living power, he has also learned the mystery of his craft. Ready? The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands. The force, right? And before he may step onward and upward, that's quite an interesting wordage there, he must prove his ability to properly apply energy. Okay. All right. So we're going to get into Apollo here. What does Apollo mean? Now, some people out there say it means destruction, which is what I thought. But actually, this is what it means. The ancient Greek and Roman god of light, healing, music. Poetry, prophecy, manly beauty. That's interesting there. Because we know Lucifer has a little feminine side to him, it looks like. The son of Leto and brother of Artemis. A very handsome young man. Okay. Hmm. Shiva. I'll show you something here. Anyways, we'll get into the Revelation 9-11 thing. And they had a king over them, which the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. So, here's what. Hillel, you know, Lucifer, the Hebrew version of it means. To shine or praise, or to howl or wail. Which is quite interesting, knowing what Lucifer does. He dances, right? So, or, you know, Shiva, I guess I should say. Anyways, look at this. Brahma and Vishnu were touring the universe one day and found a pillar of light, which extended farther than they could proceed in two directions. They were curious and decided to split up to see if one of them could find an end. Vishnu went in one direction and Brahma the other. After some time, they returned to their staring place. Vishnu said that, or that he was unable to find the beginning, no matter how far he traveled. Brahma said that he found a beginning. He lied. Thereupon, the pillar of the light immediately changed into a form 
of Sheba, who called Brahma a liar and sentenced him to be a little observed in the divine ceremonies. This is why you will not, not find many puas to him. Hmm. Quite interesting. There's Sheba coming in light. Anyways, look who we find at CERN. Shiva, look at that. With the little ring around him. Isn't that crazy? Look at that. Oh, that's a cool picture. Huh. Quite interesting. We're going to see. Alright, sorry for that cut there. I accidentally showed uh, something I probably shouldn't have. So, anyways, I apologize for that. But, anyways, I want to point this out. Look what he's doing here. You know, the 666 symbol, right? Let's go to CERN. Oh, that's quite interesting. Six, 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 one, two, three. Quite interesting there. So now we're going to see some, a video of some portals. going to see here that of the windows of heaven and all that right that there's portals into heaven or the the windows of the firmament right of the rain coming down and the fountains of the deep in the right in the flood story of noah See how that whirlwind effect is going on there? The cyclone? That pops up a lot in the ancient world. You can look this up. It pops up everywhere in the ancient world. Oh, that one's weird. I don't think I've seen anything like that one before. But see, it's got that whirlwind, that little maze. Remember that the old um, mazes that you would draw, the circular ones. That's what it looks like.
see if we can get past this one over here. Oh, oh let's go back. Check that out. Look at all those clouds, man. It's just, that's definitely not a regular cloud formation. Uh, exit. Sorry about that. Now this just looks like a jet thing, though. I don't know why they showed that one. This, I think it's worth their looking at is this thing right here. Oh, yep. Alright, well, that, there's something going on, guys, with these portals and the doorways and everything. We're going to see them in scripture here. Psalm 78, 23 through 7, or 27. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heavens. In his power, he brought in the south wind. This is going to come into play in a second. I'll show you. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and feathered fowls like the sand of the sea. Okay. All right, here we go. The book of the courses of the luminary. This is a, uh, oh, excuse me. Enoch, oh my goodness, <laughs> Chap, let's see here real quick, I should have got this before, sorry guys, I should have had this. I guess I should have said. Seventy-two, okay. Enoch, seventy-two. The book of the courses of the luminaries of the heaven, the relations of each, according to their classes, their dominion and their seasons, according to their names and places of origin, according to their months, which Uriel, the holy angel, which was with me, who is their guide, showed me, and he showed me all their laws, exactly as they are. Oh, wait. They have to follow laws too. Ain't that crazy? And how it's with regard to all the years of the world and unto eternity, till the new creation is accomplished, which dureth till eternity. And the first law of the luminaries. The luminary, the sun, has its rising in the eastern portals of the heaven and setting in the western portals of the heaven. And I saw six portals in which the sun rises, and six portals which the sun sets. Is this why there's, the sun comes in different positions in each day? Hmm. Anyways. Oh, crap. Well, shoot. What did I just do? Crap. Very professional. So what was that one? Okay, X X two. This one's X X six. Seventy six. Okay. 
chapter 76. Here we go. And at the ends of the earth, I saw 12 portals open to all the quarters of the heaven from which the winds go forth and blow over the earth. Three of them are open on the face of the heavens and three in the west and three on the right of the heaven and three on the left and three first um, are those of the east and three of those of the north. Three of those of the south, three of the, the west. Do four of these come winds of blessing? Hmm, quite interesting. And prosperity. Well, there's portals in the Bible. We're not done yet. John 1 47 through 51. Jesus saw Nathanael come unto him and saith him, Behold, an Israelite indeed. And whom is no guile? And Nathanael said unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before thou, Philip, called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt greater things earth shalt see greater things than these. And saith unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Nice. Well, here's Stephen. When he's about to get stoned, Acts 7, 59. Well, we'll do 56 through 59. And, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. See, I'm not crazy. <laughs> Here's Stephen. Seeing him, he's at the right hand of God, which means he's reigning now with God. Crazy concept. But then they cried out with a loud voice. And stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And witnesses laid down their clothes at young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So, we'll leave on a good note there. That Jesus at the right hand of God, even though Stephen is getting stoned, he's saying, you know, take my spirit. <laughs> I'm ready to go. But, and if I remember correct, yeah, if I remember correctly, I think he just fell asleep. I'm not, I don't think he died, but I could be wrong on that. I haven't had an in-depth study on Acts. But anyways, I hope. You guys learned something from this, you know, and you know there there wasn't too much stuff on portals, but hopefully you guys learned something on it, and that I believe this CERN thing is a portal to the abyss, in my opinion, from my research, and then Shiva is going to come through, aka. Lucifer or Hillel. Anyways, you guys have a wonderful day or night.